Uh, I hope you can see my slides now. Yes. So uh, yeah, today I'm, I'll be giving you a brief overview about our uh, development of the protein proximity pipeline that we have been doing uh, to map the physical neighborhood of understudied kinases. Just to provide a context, uh, proteins uh, rarely uh, act alone. They constantly communicate with each other and assemble as large functional complexes to perform basic cellular functions. And uh, by systematically analyzing protein-protein interactions, we can uh, help uh, understand uh, how proteins function and regulate cellular processes. That's why uh, we have been developing these uh, neighborhood maps that can help us link these understudied proteins to specific uh, metabolic and signaling pathways, uh, which can eventually help us identify novel drug molecules. Uh, there have been several uh, technologies that have been developed so far for uh, studying protein-protein interactions. The most popular ones are the high-throughput uh, and high-throughput methods are the yeast to hybrid method, the uh, affinity purification-based mass spectrometry and co-purification-based mass spectrometry. Each of these techniques have their specific advantages and disadvantages. However, the most popular and widely used technique has been the APMS approach, which basically picks up strong uh, physical interactions interactions. However, the bait and prey associations that are identified in these are usually non-covalent in nature, which really limits our ability to uh, use uh, uh, lysis and wash conditions that can help us solubilize, difficult to solubilize proteins like membrane proteins, and are not really uh, able to capture unstable or transient interactions. Often they are also prone to post lysis artifacts. So as a way to get around this, uh, we could use the protein uh, proximity dependent biodenylation approaches where both the bait and the proximal proteins are now covalently linked with biotin. And these biotinylated proteins can then uh, be uh, pulled or purified using streptavidin. So this really allows us to then use uh, harsh conditions to uh, solubilize pretty much the whole com uh, complete uh, proteome and perform stringent washes to get rid of any non-specific interactions. So this technique was initially developed in 2012 by Kyle Rue, which is called, also known as the BioID or the Beauty star here, which essentially is uh, 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 engineered by it in ligase, which is now uh, designed to promiscuously uh, use biotin, any exogenous biotin, and uh, regardless of whether it's protein substrate or not, to release this activated biotin as a cloud around the biotinylate or the bait protein, which can then now uh, either biotinylate any adjacent uh, vicinal proteins on their lysine residues or uh, instantly gets hydrolyzed. Several versions of this protein have also been developed like uh, the Apex uh, technology, which actually uh, essentially is a peroxidase, which catalyzes phenolic, uh, phenolic attack on tyrosine residues in presence of hydrogen peroxide. The major difference between these two technologies is really the kinetics of labeling, which happens from around uh, times uh, around minutes uh, to about uh, a few hours to days. And that's why uh, uh, there was a need to develop newer technologies, which uh, currently are the Turbo ID and Mini Turbo, which dramatically not only reduce the labeling radius, but also reduce our time to about 10 minutes to several hours uh, without the need of using any cytotoxic agents like hydrogen peroxide. So that's pretty much what we uh, are, have uh, um, been using for our uh, networks. So I would like to just take a moment to describe our experimental outflow, uh, outlining the progress we have done so far. So we have been uh, sourcing a full length uh, dark kinase or the understudied kinase uh, open reading frames across several publicly available libraries, uh, in addition to a specific partner. Uh, so to date, we have sequence validated about 132 of these uh, 150 uh, dark kinase or clones. We are using gateway technology to generate lentiviral expression plasmids uh, to generate uh, tagged versions of these proteins. We use either the single gateway uh, cloning technology or the multi-site gateway cloning technology, which can I, uh, which you can use to mix and match any given promoter with N or C terminal tag uh, to your protein in a desired vector with uh, 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 choice of your selection marker. 
all the constructs that we have been generating so far, about uh, 84 of them have been deposited on a gene and they're already available. Next, we use the third generation lentiviral technology to generate stable cell lines where all order to prevent any overexpression are artifacts. We also perform a lot of uh, bait and bioterminalization evaluation using Western blot analysis followed by mass spectrometry uh, to generate scored protein, protein and proximity networks, which then are uh, uh, publicly released in a batch manner on the dark kind of knowledge base. And eventually we'll be doing some target validation and phenotypic characterization at, as well. In the interest of time, I'll just briefly highlight a few of the optimized parameters that we have done to develop our dark kinome interactome pipeline. So once we are done with uh, bait validation, we scale up to about 10, 15 centimeter dishes uh, and treat them with 50 micromolar biotin ranging from 30 minutes to two hours, depending on the expression of the bait and the biotin innovation signal that we get. We do two independent IPs using 20 mg of protein and 30 microliters of streptavidin beads uh, with overnight IP. Um, we have also spent a significant amount of time in SDS, uh, high to low salt gradient, different component uh, compositions of detergents. Uh, we also use rapigest and on bead digestion for eluting off our proteins. In order to get rid of any of these uh, residual detergents, we use an additional ethyl acid precipitation in addition to the we shoot them on the mass spec we do our mass spec searches using MaxQuant and followed by saint and compass scoring and all of these data will then publicly be available uh, through either the dark kind of knowledge base or public repositories like biogrid uh, so we have just finished our first initial round uh, of uh, generating these dark kinome proximity networks for about 30 baits. The orange nodes that you uh, see in the snapshot are the actual baits. Uh, these are the prey proteins and the green edges that you see are known database interactions that we have overlaid on top of the uh, uh, our interaction networks. So we have this data for about 30 or, or dark kinases, which is largely represented by the CDK family. However, we have also ensured that we have proteins that are representative throughout the kinome tree as well. One minute. We use Saint Express, sorry? One minute. Oh, okay. I'll just move quickly then. So since these proximity networks are uh, uh, essentially, uh, uh, you would expect that the bait and prey proteins would uh, follow uh, or uh, be present in the same subcellular localization. Here you can see CDK19 is pretty much uh, localized to the nucleus, while CDK is mainly cyto uh, sorry plasma associated. Additionally, baits like BCKDK, which are uh, specifically localized to mitochondria, we pretty much identify mitochondrial proteins as well as uh, their endogenous biotin related uh, substrates as well. In addition, we have also incorporated a lot of positive controls, including CDK2. Here you can see a lot of known uh, database interaction have been uh, in. Uh, however, we are spending all our uh, current efforts at uh, improving our scoring system by incorporating LFQ, annotating these and uh, path. Pathways in integrating quorum and phosphorus knowledge base. With that, I'd like to end my presentation by acknowledging members of the major lab and Gold Fab lab and uh, the Protein Expression Laboratory for providing us with multi site gateway to cloning technology. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Bott, for your very nice talk. Let's move on to